tsunami in Puerto Rico, the forgotten danger. Tsunami, a Japanese word that means harbor wave, is used internationally to describe the series of waves caused by an impulsive disturbance that displaces a body of water. As these waves near the coastline, they can present themselves as quickly rising tide or bore of turbulent water. Once they reach the shore, they can cause extensive flooding. A tsunami can be generated by an earthquake, a landslide, a volcanic eruption, or an impact from a large object falling into the ocean. Most tsunamis are produced as a direct or indirect consequence of a local, regional, or distant earthquake. In order for an earthquake to generate a tsunami, at least a segment of the fault where it originates must be on the ocean floor. Records show that earthquakes with a magnitude greater than 6.5 on the Richter scale can cause destructive tsunamis. But we must not forget that smaller earthquakes can cause landslides capable of producing locally destructive tsunami. Generally, the size of the tsunami is directly proportional to the magnitude of the earthquake. Fortunately, not all earthquakes produce tsunamis. During an earthquake, the movement along the fault is so fast that the response on the surface is identical to the deformation that took place on the ocean floor. Then, as the force of gravity attempts to return equilibrium to the sea level, inertia makes water rise, generating the train of waves known as tsunami. The deeper the earthquake is generated, the less efficient is the transfer of energy from the earthquake to the tsunami. This is because, for a given magnitude, a deep earthquake will produce a smaller vertical displacement than a shallow earthquake. It is this vertical displacement that creates the tsunami, so a large shallow earthquake will generate a tsunami more efficiently than a large deep earthquake. Most faults have an elongated shape. Consequently, the energy causing the tsunami will mostly propagate in the direction that is perpendicular to the fault's length. These faults can be found along subduction zones, such as those located north and south of Puerto Rico. Most tsunamigenic earthquakes have taken place in the Pacific Ocean. But there have also been reports of tsunamis in other regions, including the Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean. November 1st, 1755, a magnitude 8.7 earthquake occurred southeast of Portugal. Most casualties, estimated between 50 and 70,000, were not associated with the earthquake itself, but were the result of a tsunami that was caused by the earthquake. This tsunami not only affected Portugal and other European countries, but also crossed the Atlantic in about 8 hours, producing 23 feet waves around Saba Island, 15 feet waves around St. Martin, and 12 foot waves around Antigua and Dominica in the Lesser Antilles. One of the most destructive earthquakes of the 20th century took place on May 22, 1960, in Chile. It left more than 2 million people homeless and caused 3,000 deaths. This earthquake generated a large-scale tsunami, which caused damage in Chile, Hawaii, Japan, the Philippines, and the west coast of the United States. In Hawaii, where a warning system was already in place, 61 people died, 282 were injured, and millions of dollars in property damage resulted. The Honshu coastline in Japan was devastated. There, 100 people died, 85 disappeared. 855 were wounded, and 1,700 homes were destroyed. Another great earthquake took place in Alaska on Good Friday, March 27, 1964, at 5.36 p.m. In some areas, the earthquake was felt for minutes. The associated tsunami caused 106 deaths in Alaska and 17 on the west coast of the United States, for a total of 123. There was also widespread damage along the shores of the Gulf of Alaska, British Columbia, Canada, and Hawaii. At 7.16 p.m. on September 1, 1992, a magnitude 7.0 earthquake occurred in Nicaragua. Although a few people felt the earthquake, it caused a tsunami with 26-foot waves, which penetrated more than one mile inland. The official account reports 116 dead, 
68 missing, and 3,500 homeless. Associated waves were registered throughout Ecuador, Chile, and Costa Rica. This kind of earthquake, where the size of the generated waves is not proportional to the earthquake intensity, is called a tsunamigenic earthquake. In the Caribbean, there have also been tsunamis generated by local and regional earthquakes. In Puerto Rico, both the 1867 and 1918 earthquakes generated significant tsunamis. The one associated with the 1946 earthquake in the Dominican Republic was observed along Puerto Rico's northern shoreline, especially in Arecibo. Twenty days after a devastating hurricane swept the Virgin Islands, and a few days after some minor quakes had been felt in St. Thomas on November 18, 1867, a powerful earthquake shook the Virgin Islands and eastern Puerto Rico. The epicenter was located in the Virgin Island Basin, between St. Thomas, St. Croix, and Vieques. It was a beautiful day in St. Thomas, when suddenly, around 2.45 p.m., a strange noise was heard. The noise became louder and louder until the earthquake was felt, which itself lasted about a minute and a half. A few minutes later, the ocean rose about 15 to 20 feet like a straight white wall. In the bay, it swept away vessels and lifted large battleships. Ten minutes later, another wave hit, but this time it was worse and a large area was flooded. Damage was most significant in the commercial sector, where the waves entirely flooded the stores facing the bay. In St. Croix, the earthquake was felt strongly. In Frederickstadt, shortly after the quake, the seawater began to recede. Then, it came back with such strength that it dragged an anchored vessel towards the beach. As the seawater retreated once again, the vessel was stranded on top of a coral reef. The quake was also felt strongly by residents of Vieques and Culebra. Immediately, waves rose up from the south of Vieques and wrapped around the island, drenching its north coast. In Naguabo, the church had to be closed as seawater entered far into town. On the coastal towns of Arroyo and Salinas, the wave was quite high, causing seawater to reach 120 feet inland. October 11th, 1918, 10.14 a.m. The island of Puerto Rico was shaken by one of the strongest earthquakes to have occurred in the region. It was felt for a little over a minute. I was 12 years old when I felt the noise approaching. It was very loud. Then I said what came to my mind. Could this be an earthquake? I thought that by myself. Then suddenly... Do you know what's like to see the horizon moving this way, that way, and again and again? The earthquake's epicenter was located in the Mona Passage, 25 miles off the coast of Aguadilla. It was felt the strongest on the west coast, where people ran into the streets as they feared being trapped inside the buildings. The soil was cracked everywhere. But let me tell you, now I think it was ignorance, but that was scary. Do you know what's like to see the river overflowing that fast, hitting and destroying everything in its path? It was estimated that approximately 800 buildings were destroyed. A total of 116 people died, 40 of them as a direct consequence of the tsunami that arrived at the island immediately after the earthquake. The tsunami reached a height of 20 feet in the Aguadilla area. There, five minutes after the earthquake, the seawater began to withdraw as it exposed reef and parts of the seabed. Shortly afterward, the first wave hit, flooding part of the city. 32 persons were reported to have drowned. May God never permit another earthquake like that. I only think that if something like the 1918 earthquake happened today, it would leave Puerto Rico in ruins.
Punta Borinquen, Aguadilla, the waters began to withdraw immediately while the earthquake was still being felt, and then came back as a 20-foot wave, reaching up to 300 feet inland. At Punta Gujerada, also in Aguadilla, eight people drowned. Hundreds of palm trees were uprooted. Here, it is calculated that the waves were up to 20 feet high. In Mayagüez, where the tsunami arrived at estimated 20 minutes after the earthquake was felt, the lower floors of buildings located along the coast were flooded. Here, the waves reached 5 feet above sea level. Further south, the waves registered little more than 4 feet, but they were strong enough to pull out houses and drag them into the bay. In Bocaron, a town in Cabo Rojo, waves were three feet high. Here, the water began receding an hour after the earthquake. A small boat that was anchored 150 feet off the coastline in four and a half foot deep water rested on the ocean floor for a few minutes when the water receded. In Isabella, along the north coast, the wave was seen by many people a half hour after the earthquake. In Arecibo, the wave was observed entering the Arecibo River. In Canovanas, the river called Rio Grande de Loiza retreated and then surged three feet above its normal level. It is estimated that the wave reached the river entrance 20 minutes after the quake. Other triggering mechanisms for tsunamis are landslides, volcanic eruptions, and an impact by an object in the ocean. Tsunamis produced by these phenomena tend to be very large close to their point of origin. But as they move further away, they become smaller. Therefore, it is most likely for this kind of tsunami to affect an area closer to the point of origin. A landslide that takes place either underwater or on land, but whose debris enters a body of water can generate a tsunami as it displaces great amounts of water. There is evidence of a major landslide on the south side of the Puerto Rico Trench. It is estimated that its volume was around 220 cubic miles and that it dropped 28,000 feet into the trench. Depending on the duration of the landslide, computer models suggest that the sea level could have reached heights between 87 and 227 feet along Puerto Rico's northern coastline. There is also the risk of a tsunami caused by volcanic eruptions of either submarine or subaerial origin. Among possible submarine eruptions, the greatest threat comes from a volcano called Kikimjeni, located in the southeast region of the Caribbean, 450 miles away from Puerto Rico. This volcano has been active for many years. It has had more than 10 eruptions since 1939. Among surface eruptions, the danger is associated with volcanoes such as Zephyr Hills on Montserrat, which has recently been very active. In this case, a local tsunami can be produced either by debris avalanche reaching the ocean or part of the volcano collapsing into the ocean. In both cases, the local tsunami could exceed heights of 30 feet, affecting nearby islands, but then it would diminish quickly, not affecting Puerto Rico. Although slight, there is the possibility of a tsunami being generated by the impact of an asteroid or other large object from space on the surface of the ocean. Some theories argue that this kind of event could have caused the extinction of dinosaurs. In the open ocean, a tsunami generated by an earthquake is generally less than 3 feet high, but it can travel at a velocity of more than 400.